Hi and welcome to Biostock Studio here at Medicom Village in Lund. We are in the midst of report season and this morning cancer therapy company Rovac released their report for the fourth quarter. And I am joined by CEO Anders Monson who will tell us more about this. Welcome Anders. Thank you. So let's start by looking at 2020. What would you say were the biggest achievements and challenges for Rovac? Well, if we start with the challenges, I think everybody realizes what the big challenge is. And that's obviously the pandemic situation that we have. Uh, And of course, this has uh, had a large impact on society in general. But if we focus on the impacts that it's had on Rovac, it has impacted us mainly on two parameters. One is travel restrictions. Obviously, we've not been able to travel to the extent that we had anticipated and participate in in conferences, etc. Uh, But luckily, we were able to establish good relationships with about 20 or so uh, potential partners already prior to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it has been no problem to keep those those relationships and those dialogues ongoing uh, through the use of digital apps. And we've become quite savvy in using them these days. Uh, The second parameter is, of course, the, uh, the clinical trial, the phase 2B trial. And as we communicated already a few months ago, Uh, We are suffering from some delays, which is only to be anticipated given the situation. Uh, But the good news is that we have no reason to change the revised forecast. Uh, So we are operating on on being able to to conclude recruitment in the study by the end of the second quarter as uh, as we targeted a few months back. And then, of course, if we look into the achievements, I'd say we carry on on the same theme because obviously the the biggest achievement is is overcoming the challenges. Uh, So, of course, being able to conduct this study under these circumstances, I think, is the biggest achievement. And specifically, I would like to highlight the fact that we now have active clinics recruiting patients in all of the countries that we had originally forecast. So uh, the UK joined us uh, only a few weeks ago with active clinics and we have Denmark, we have Sweden, we have Finland, we have Germany, we have Belgium and we have the US. So even in these circumstances we are able to carry through with the study uh, and we have included patients from all of the countries that we uh, set out to achieve. Uh, And then finally uh, I would like to again highlight the fact that we Uh, by the end of the year got the fast track designation from the FDA uh, in the US. And I think that it has taken a while for shareholders to fully comprehend the marketing impact that this has. Obviously, we're quite unique in developing immunotherapy for prostate cancer. uh, And of course, the fact that the FDA has now given us this level of priority obviously sets us aside even more from other projects in this area, in the oncology area. So, so this has actually meant that we're quite well known now, specifically in the prostate cancer area, but also generally in the oncology area. And this obviously helps the partnering process to a great extent. Turning then to the financial side of the report, is there anything in specific that you would like to highlight? Well, in general, I'd say that there are no big surprises in the finances. We're not spending as much money as we had anticipated. And the reason, again, is obviously that we have cost savings in travel. Uh, and also cost saving in clinical operations due to the delays. Uh, If we go to travel first, I think uh, if there's something positive to come out of the pandemic, it is actually uh, that we have been able to change our culture to some extent on travel. And I think even going forward without the restrictions, we will be slightly more conservative in terms of how much we travel. And that might be something that benefits companies uh, all over the world. I think the key point to notice in our report in terms of uh, the financial situation is a verification that we have uh, a good and strong cash position. If you look into the report and and look at our cash holdings and other current assets, which is essentially prepaid work, uh, we have uh, over 100 million Swedish kroner. And I can update also and say that only last week we had another 10 million kroner installment paid from the Horizon 2020 grant. So the conclusion of this is that we have a cash position that is strong enough to take us through all of the development activities that we have planned, including the preclinical development, including the formulation development and including the phase 2B. And that, I think, is a really important conclusion and, and a strong message to send. Let's end with a classical question. What milestones can we look forward to during 2021? 
a lot will happen in 2021. I mean, the most important thing to realize is that we now have just over a year until we have the crucial phase 2B results. Uh, so that's obviously of great importance. And during the course of a year, we will also finalize all other development projects, mostly in the preclinical arena that we have ongoing in parallel. And since we're drawing closer to, uh, to having the final results, we will obviously also intensify communication to the market, both internationally and nationally, uh, communicating directly to the stock market. And uh, we have decided uh, to actually intensify by uh, utilizing some of the channels of Actius Barana. Uh, so we will uh, communicate via newsletters through their channels and also through some podcasts where we uh, discuss the progress of our company and our project. And if we uh, look to what we will be communicating largely, well, uh, let's mention one item per quarter. So in the first quarter, I think the most important thing to communicate on is the fact that we were able to bring on board four new uh, uh, clinics in the uh, uh, phase 2B trial uh, in the US. And these will be quite prestigious clinics to bring on board this trial. So, uh, so I think that's really an important piece of news to communicate on. In the second quarter, I, I think the most important news is the confirmation that we have been able to recruit all the patients for the phase 2B trial. Because once we have recruited all the patients, the rest is really the home stretch to getting the results. So that's obviously of great importance and relevance to the shareholders as well. Then in quarter three, uh, we uh, aspire to be able to communicate the results of a long-term follow-up that we're doing on the phase one, two patients. You might remember that we had a publication in the fall of 2020 uh, uh, with an article that discussed the results of the trial and the one-year follow-up. And now we're doing a longer term follow up. So that will be interesting news uh, to look out for as well. And then finally, in the, in the fourth and final quarter of 2021, we will be closing all the preclinical development activities that are ongoing and we'll be communicating on those results as well. So many exciting things will happen. And these are, of course, the things that we can talk about and that we can foresee. Uh, obviously, in parallel to all of this, the partnering process will also intensify. Uh, but there is nothing I can disclose at the moment uh, on this process. Well, well, we'll look forward to uh, following both the things that you can discuss now and maybe hearing more about the things that you can't discuss right now. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much.